was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a look at the rules of the Digimon trading card game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Sounds good to me. You see, what's going to happen is that we've had a video released over in Japan and we've had a bunch of cards revealed and we can pretty much work out the basic rules of the Digimon trading card game. The new one, the one I've been covering a little bit on this channel and incidentally we'll cover more and more as time goes by. It looks awesome. Now, we do not have full information, so here's the deal. This isn't my proper learn to play. As soon as we have proper guaranteed perfect information, I will bring you a proper learn to play. For now, this is my, we've got a bit of information. Let's do what we can with what we have. And if you've got anything to add, drop it down in the comment section and we'll have a chat about it. So judging from the size of the starter decks which are going on sale in April, we are going to be playing with 50 free card decks. Cool. There are some cards which come out of your deck and don't actually go in properly. We'll get there in a moment. And the game is played using the memory gauge, which is basically the same as the Chrono Clash gauge from the Chrono Clash system. And though I did have a learn to play I did for that a little while ago, I'll link that in the description. But basically, every Digimon you play has a cost. This one costs free. So what happens is you move the gauge free along. This card costs eight. You move the gauge eight along. And you move it from your side through zero to your opponent's side. When it hits your opponent's side, it is their turn. You can do as much as you like on your turn, up until the moment it hits your opponent's side, then it goes to their turn. If you play a really big card, then you're going to give them lots of memory to use on their turn. If you play a little card, they'll only have a tiny bit that they can do before it goes back to your turn. It's a brilliant system. This is not just Chrono Clash. It clearly is derived from the rules of Chrono Clash. I genuinely believe that this is a more refined, better version of Chrono Clash from what we can see so far. But I stand by my point that the best bit about Chrono Clash was the Chrono Gauge, and we're getting that. Now, in terms of winning the game, at the beginning of the game, both players take the top five cards of their deck and lay them face down as security cards. The security stack, if you will. When you have a Digimon to battle, you can attack the stack. When you take the stack down to zero, i.e. there are no cards left in the stack, you can attack your opponent and win the game. There are going to be ways to attack multiple. We've already seen one of those, to be fair. And there are going to be ways to add more to your stack. And there are going to be blockers that can stop the stack being attacked. For instance, and I need to give a massive shout out to the lovely Jason Snowjacks for giving us some translations here. But this card reads, on your turn, when this Digimon's attack is blocked add free to your memory so clearly there is a way of blocking and getting rolling here so that's quite nice and while we're here this card basically gives you security attack plus one meaning that you can attack two security cards rather than just the normal one so it's not just attack six times to win some can attack more some can give you extra security some can block we imagine and it's probably going to go somewhere along those lines. Sounds like fun. Now, there are certain things from the Chrono Clash game that seem to be missing. We've not seen anything about an extra deck so far. That was an extra thing in the Chrono Clash system whereby you had a separate deck of very few cards, generally oversized, that you would play by destroying your battlers on the field rather than using the Chrono Clash gauge. We don't have icons, we have words. I love this change. As much as I enjoy the fact that the icons bring language away from the game, there are so many more options using words than having to pick from a series of icons. Loved the idea, much prefer just having words. And questing, which was some weird thing in Chrono Clash where you could win by questing rather than taking out guardians, I never got on board with that. That one's gone. We have some new stuff, though. These cards can evolve. We'll get there in a minute. There is a baby Digimon mechanic. More on that in a minute. And there are Tamer cards. More on that in a moment. So if we have a quick look at the mat here, we can see that we've got your deck and your trash, i.e. where discarded cards go, cards you've played or Digimon that have been knocked out. 
We have your security where you lay out your five cards ready to go. Your battle area where your Digimon go when they're battling. And a raising area. Now the raising area is a little bit awkward. We've not had a proper this is what it is. However, from the video and also from the articles over at Digimon World, brilliant website, make sure you're checking them out. It seems to be that you have a certain number of baby Digimon that go not really into your deck because you put them in the raising area at the beginning of the game. Given that you're playing with 53 card decks, I'm going to go ahead and guess maybe three and then a proper 50 card deck, but I'm not 100% sure. If anyone's got further insight, chuck it down in the comments. And if we get a whole bunch of extra stuff, I will pin a comment with all the extra stuff we know. So looking at the Digimon then, every Digimon card has two costs. So this dude here, what we've got is free cost or zero cost. This is a level three Digimon. So you've got two options. You either pay free on the memory gauge and play down as is, or you don't pay at all, but it must be put onto a level two Digimon. Now you'll see the Digitama card here, the baby Digimon doesn't have a cost because it doesn't start in your deck, it starts in the raising area. So you've got two options. Either you pay free, down he goes, or you don't pay, and you evolve into this, into a level 2, from a level 3. And the evolution mechanic is very cool. You can evolve any Digimon of one colour into the next level Digimon of the same colour. So it's not like Pokemon where you've got set evolution lines. As long as it's the same colour and the next level, you can evolve into whatever you like. Any level 2 red goes into any level 3 red, as an example. But we also have inheritable and non-inheritable abilities. So some Digimon have literally these skills in the main body of the card. So this card, when you evolve during this turn, this Digimon gains 3000 DP power. And that is just there, just in the text of the card. This card, when attacking once per turn, Put this Digimon in active mode. Although that is a level 6 Digimon, which as far as I am aware, please correct me, I believe level 6 is as high as we go. We've seen two level 6 cards. We've not seen anything higher than that, unless I've missed something. But we have inheritable abilities. So this level 3 Digimon here, on your turn, this Digimon gains plus 1,000 DP. I.e. when it's your turn and you're attacking, you gain 1,000, but on your opponent's turn, you don't. And that is an inheritable ability. So when you evolve up, all of your Digimon that evolve from this one always get plus a thousand DP on their turn. And you can end up evolving multiple times. I mean, in theory, you could start with a level two and get a level three, level four, level five, level six, and have many different abilities all stacked up together there, making a rather ridiculous Digimon, which as a side note is probably, along with getting rid of questing, the thing that makes me most excited about this game, the fact that you can evolve up and really Build a custom Digimon as you go through the game. Actually, the fact that you start with Digitama, the baby Digimon, that you've picked out at the beginning of the game, I actually do love that. That seems to add a bit of consistency and certainty, which takes away from the inherent randomness that you get in trading card games. So this all sounds rather lovely indeed. We then have Tamer cards. These are basically there to help you out. They are permanent cards that stay in play, cannot attack, cannot be attacked. So here's an example of two cost. On your turn, all your Digimon gain 1000 DP. Now at this stage, it might be a good idea to mention security abilities. You see, what we've clearly got here is a security ability. Play this card without paying the cost. So it seems to be that if a card ends up in your security stack, when it appears as a security card, i.e. when it is the top card of the security stack as it is being attacked, you would go through the usual trying to destroy the security card, but you would also get this security skill. If it works like Chrono Clash, which you know it's going to, this is not dependent on whether you win the security battle or any of that rubbish. You just get that skill. 
Now, the way it works in Chrono Clash is when you attack a security card or guardian as it is in that game, you can pair powers and the guardian automatically goes and the attacker goes if the guardian's power is higher than or equal to. We've not been given information about that for this game. We will have to wait and see. And then we've got option cards which just do something. So this big 8 power dude here, when you play it, you destroy an opponent's Digimon just straight away. And it's got a security effect, activate this card's effect, i.e. destroy one of your opponent's Digimon. Option cards are single use and help you out here or there. And that's what we know for the moment. To sum it all up, you start with your Digitama in the raising area. You can play Digimon for their cost or evolve them for a different, usually lower cost. And you can evolve your Digimon into any Digimon of the same color and the next level. Playing cards moves the memory gauge. When it goes past zero, it's your opponent's turn. And each player starts with five security cards. You win the game by removing all security cards and attacking to win. There are inheritable and security abilities in addition to regular abilities and we also have option cards and tamer cards, option cards being single use, tamer cards being permanent. That's what we know for now. We don't know other things. Maybe there will be a questing mechanic. Maybe there will be a really clear and obvious you can block with any Digimon mechanic. Usually what happens with new games is that new mechanics get revealed over time. They rarely drop everything in one go. So don't count this as a complete, here is everything you need to know about playing the Digimon trading card game. See it as a, here's what we know about the rules so far. And I'm happy to go on record and say this sounds fun. This sounds like they've taken the Chrono Clash system and gone, okay, there are things we like, there are things that could be improved, let's make a better version of that and stick to one property, that being Digimon. I am extremely excited. As more cards get revealed, as we learn more, the number of videos about this game on this channel will be ramping up. I'm going to be bringing you videos soon, showing you all the cards that have been revealed. I think that seems fair. And I am also going to be bringing you videos, one we're going to be seeing this week, on how to actually try and make sure this gets a release outside of Japan. There are things you can do to help. And there are things you can do that you think are helping that are actually hindering. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to know what you think about this game. I'd like to know what other deductions and predictions you've got. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Digimon and all kinds of other games, frankly. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can support the channel, get some weekly bonus podcasts, tell me what videos to make, etc. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wossy Plays.